Hello, my name is Isaiah, and in this video we're going to talk about how to test for bad memory. Now, I have a stick here of DDR4 memory I found in the box, and as you see, drastically my setup has changed. Uh, I moved states, so a lot of my equipment is kind of scattered in boxes everywhere. Like I said, I did find this random stick of memory. Um, I also have this whole box of memory, uh, different, different brands, different types. Uh, so when you come across memory and you don't know if it's good or not, what type of software do you need to use is what we're going to talk about today and how to test the memory to see if it's operating properly or not. What up guys, so this is my current status of my office and that computer right down there is what we're going to use today. Inside I have some DDR3 memory that kind of got bumped around and then uh, we're going to go USB stick on it because I don't have um, a CD drive. So if you go down and download Memtest86, you either get a USB version or a CD version. Now if you download the USB version, uh, there's a program to write the image to the disk. Or you can use this program called Rufus, which does the same thing. Now if you download the ISO, you have to burn that to a disk. Now it's very important, so whatever you're booting with USB or ISO, I mean uh, disk. You need to go into the BIOS and make sure that's priority. If you just have your hard drive first, then you're going to have issues. And on top of that, you want to make sure the USB or CD boots into the UEFI mode. Uh, otherwise, you get the old version, which is 4.3. It only has 4 gigabytes addressable and a few other limitations. Once it starts booting up and you get the right version instead of the blue version, uh, you'll see this screen right here. It goes through all the checking and everything. And then on the next screen, if you don't do anything, about 10 seconds later on the top of the screen, it'll say automatically start tests, which is basically what you want to do anyways. And here it is. It's basically just going through all the options. Uh, if you were to press C or escape on the keyboard, you can go into this menu. And then if you want to go back to the main menu, press 3 or skip tests. In the main menu, this is all the stuff uh, that you see that you can find in the old version too, but it's not laid out very well. The downside of this is that pretty much all these other settings you don't need. The main one you want to be looking at is system info if you don't know what memory you have in the computer, how fast it is, or how what it's set for speed wise and you can go through all the timings and all that per stick and then uh, you can see what was last loaded into it there's lots of menus a lot of choices uh, the main section you want to look at is the test section if you press t on the keyboard uh, that allows you to pick any tests you want it allows you to set how many passes you are pretty much uh, that's where you're going to find all the options and then once you have them set you can tell it to run a test again and the way this test works is you this goes to all the banks of memory, compares it to all the, the CPU cache, uh, every single dim, every single bit of memory, and it tries all the patterns you can think of. The great thing about this is if it, your memory is bad, or if you have an overclock with a wrong voltage, or maybe it's stressing the CPU memory controller too hard, all that stuff will pop up as far as errors go, and then you can kind of evaluate what is the issue. A lot of times it overclocks, you could have the memory being out of spec too far or if the CPU is overclocked and the memory core or the memory controller I should say is overclocked that can cause problems too. So if you see any issues you'll see error count. Uh, if you do see an issue then set your memory back to say stock speeds, set your CPU back to stock speeds and see if there's still errors. If there's not, then put your memory back to what it was. If it's, say, fast memory, set the XMP profile again, and then run the test again, see if there's errors. A lot of times, if you set the XMP profile, it'll overclock your CPU also, which can lead to instabilities and all that. Definitely, this program's amazing as far as finding out if your memory is just bad, your overclock might be part of the issue, but really, if your computer's crashing, this is a good stop to look for. Anyways, thanks for checking out this video. I know it's kind of a quick but more of a ramble. Uh, this is what you're going to see. So thank you. And don't forget to subscribe.